Welcome to Redival Report Interpretation for the Diabetic Retinopathy Assessment, Flicker 16 Trollin Test, and PHNR. So electroretinography measures the electrical responses of various cell types in the retina, including the photoreceptors, inner retinal cells, and the ganglion cells in response to a stimulus. If you look at this animation here, you can see on the left-hand side is a cross-section of the eye end of the retina, and on the right-hand side is the waveform generated by the ERG measurement. On the x-axis, it measures implicit time or time of response in milliseconds. And on the y-axis, it measures strength of response or amplitude in microvolts. As the light travels through the eye and through the different layers of the retina, it triggers an electrical response in the photoreceptors, which can be seen in the waveform here as this first peak here that's called the A wave. As the electrical response travels from the photoreceptors to the bipolar cells, you get this second peak here called the B wave. And then as the electrical signal travels from the bipolar cells to the retinal ganglion cells, you get this third peak here called the photopic negative response. And then as the electrical signal leaves the eye through the optic nerve, the uh, waveform returns to zero. The first test I'm going to review is the DR assessment, which is used for diabetic retinopathy. The DR assessment protocol produces a DR score based on four components. First, the best eyes 32 trolling implicit time, longer times increase the DR score. Second, the best eyes 16 trolling amplitude, smaller amplitudes increase the DR score. Third, the worst eyes four trollin to 32 trollin pupillary response, less reactive pupils increase the DR score and the patient's age. Increasing scores indicate increasing disease severity. This DR assessment has been clinically validated in multiple cross-sectional and longitudinal studies for the detection of vision-threatening diabetic retinopathy and the prediction of diabetic retinopathy disease progression. The Brigel et al. study showed that if the DR score is greater than 23.4, the patient has an 11 times increased risk of needing an ocular intervention within three years. So remember, this test must be done on a patient who is not dilated. So make sure that you run this test on patients who are not dilated. This is a report uh, for a healthy patient um, for the DR assessment. You can see here at the top, it identifies the patient ID. This can be a numeric number or an alphanumeric number or a, a, a name, for example. Birth date is the next thing I look at. Uh, it's very important to make sure you get the right birth date in there, not only for uh, tracking, but also for uh, comparison versus the normative database. These two pictures here are taken during the test and they're kind of a quality control measurement. I use this to look at and make sure that the sensor strips are placed correctly. In this case, the end of the sensor strip lines up with the middle of the pupil and the top of the sensor strip is a couple millimeters below the lid lash line. Um, as a rule of thumb, if you can see the um, sensor strips in the picture, that's usually good. If you can't see the sensor strips in the picture, then uh, chances are they, they were not in the right place and you should probably rerun that test. So this report can be as easy as you want it to be, or you can dig into the details if you'd like. If you're interested in just a quick number telling you, is this patient at risk or is this patient not at risk? You can look at the DR score. And in this particular case, 14.8, that's well within the limits of the uh, Brigel study, you know, 7 to 23.4. If you want to compare it to the normative database, you can see in the second percentile, so way down at the bottom of the DR score range. And remember, the lower the DR score, the better. If you'd like to look at the specifics, first thing I do is I look at this legend to remind me that if you're thinking about implicit time, high implicit times are bad are slow and usually indicate uh, retinal stress or there's something stressing the retina. So any, anything above the 95th percentile will be flagged as yellow or red. Amplitude is a reverse. Low amplitudes uh, indicate a low strength of response, usually indicate that there's some kind of damage that has already occurred. And anything less than the fifth percentile will be flagged as yellow or red. You can look at the specifics. So this is the waveform 
Remember that this uh, takes multiple flashes and gives you an, uh, throws out any blink artifact, any bad measurements, and gives you an average representation of the waveform. The yellow, the sorry, the orange line indicates 16 trolland, or uh, 16 trollands is the luminance, so the, the lower brightness. And the green line indicates 32 trollands, or double the luminance. And you can see the best eyes. Remember, the best eyes implicit time is included in the score. In this case, that's 25.3 milliseconds, or fifth percentile, so very fast. And then it looks at the best eyes in amplitude. 29.7 microvolts or 83rd percentile. So that's very strong as well. You can also look and see the amplitudes on both eyes are very good at both strengths. And the, the implicit times on both eyes are also good flagged in green for both strengths as well. The next measurement is the pupil response. You can see here on the left eye here, the blue line indicates the pupil response for the lower luminance, four trolling uh, uh, luminance. And the green line indicates uh, the pupil response for the brighter 32 trolling luminance. What you want to have is as much of a separation or response separation between these two lines. And you get a score, an area ratio of 2.3, which is 79th percentile, so strong as well. So if I look at this patient, and this is a, a diabetic patient or, or a patient with diabetic retinopathy, this uh, score to me indicates that they're not at risk of progression at this point of time. This report is a report for a patient who is less healthy. Uh, so you can see good straight sensor strip placements as per the pictures. If I want to look at just one number, I can see 24.8. That is above 23.4, so that is outside the limits. That is also well above the reference interval as well. You can see here the implicit times for both eyes are very slow, indicating that there's some sort of something stressing the retina. The amplitudes are okay. A um, little bit below average, but still flag, uh, still within the green. Um, this to me indicates that you know, chances are you can't see any damage in the eye. So if you look at an OCT or a fundus photograph, there's probably nothing that's apparent right now. However, something is stressing the retina out. And if nothing is done, this uh, stress could turn into damage. So that's what's good about these reports is it can flag these issues, you know, months, years in advance of actually seeing any kind of damage. Pupil response, not bad um, in the green. However, you can see for this patient, the, um, you know, um, separation between the higher luminance and the lower luminance is, is, is not as much. So it's not as much of a pupil response. So I would keep an eye on that over time. So this patient is a, has 11 times greater risk of needing an ocular intervention for vision threatening diabetic retinopathy over the next three years. Uh, so if you are um, seeing this patient, you may want to counsel them on, you know, diabetic control. Uh, you may want to uh, put them on vitamins if that's something that you do for, for this particular situation or refer them to um, a, a retina specialist uh, because this patient is definitely at risk of needing an intervention in the next three years. The next test that I'm going to review is the Flicker 16 Trollman test, which is also used for diabetic retinopathy. Now, this test can be used instead of the DR assessment uh, for patients who have vision issues with one eye. Remember that the DR assessment uses the best score from uh, the left or right eye. And if, so if you're only dealing with one eye, uh, you're not getting a, a proper measurement. And so the diabetic retinopathy is probably not for that patient who has vision issues with one eye. The other thing too, is if you have a patient who's dilated or in any state of dilation, you can't use the DR assessment protocol because it has a pupil response component. Um, so instead of not doing anything, you can run this test. So for this test, same thing, I look to see what uh, sensor, strip, sensor strip placement looks like, and in this case, it's good. I look at the waveforms here. Remember, 50 flashes uh, per test, and this takes, uh, uh, it takes out any blink artifact, any bad measurements, and gives you an average representation. Remember, time on the x-axis in milliseconds and amplitude on the uh, y-axis in microvolts. I can see here on the right eye, the implicit times delayed significantly, 100th percentile. So this patient, something is stressing their retina. 
However, their amplitude is good. It's just about average. So chances are with this patient, you can't see any issues either with an OCT or a fundus photograph, but something is happening. And so if this patient goes untreated uh, or without an intervention, things could get worse. And this slow implicit time uh, generally precedes damage, which you'll eventually see in the amplitude here. Same thing in the left eye, 99th percentile, so significantly delayed. Amplitude is a little bit lower from the left eye to the right eye, uh, however, still in the green. Uh, but this patient is at risk for, for developing either for their diabetic retinopathy to get worse or for developing diabetic retinopathy. This next, next test is the photopic negative response, which is a test that's generally used for glaucoma. You can see here, waveform looks a little bit different. Uh, the first two tests use a high frequency flicker or high frequency flash, and it doesn't really give the retina a chance to recover after each flash. So you see a different looking waveform, more like a roller coaster. This test has a lower frequency flashing, giving the retina a chance to recover after each flash. So you get a more traditional A wave, B wave, PH and R. What I, yeah, in this particular test, we ran it twice per eye. So you can see the green line indicates the first test. The orange line indicates the second test. Because both lines are pretty much one on top of each other, that indicates to me that this was a good quality measurement with good reproducibility. So you can see here, the numbers here at the bottom on the first row are the first test, second test, and then the numbers below the line are the average. First thing I look at is implicit time or time of response. And in this particular case, it's green, so that's good. These are fast responses. If this were red, that would indicate to me that there's significant stress on the retinal ganglion cells. And so if this is a glaucoma suspect, they could be developing glaucoma. If this were a glaucoma patient, their glaucoma could be getting worse. In this case, they're green. I would keep an eye on this over time. I mean, this is a snapshot here, but take a look at it in six months, a year, next time you run this test on the patient and see if this implicit time is getting slower. If it is, that could indicate that things are getting worse for this patient. Amplitude, amplitude's a lot more apparent. If, if amplitude is flagged as yellow or red, that usually indicates this patient has visible glaucomatous damage to their eye. You can probably see the damage. If it's green, however, that could indicate, okay, there's no damage now, but I would look at this measure over time. Same thing, snapshot now, look at it six months from now, a year from now, if the amplitudes are getting uh, lower, that could indicate that damage is occurring. And then the last thing I look at is this W ratio. W ratio is a measure of how the electrical current is traveling from through the different layers of the retina, from the photoreceptors to the retinal ganglion cells. And you wanna preserve as much of that signal as possible. And so for this particular W ratio, I want to look at is the number as close to one as possible or above one. That indicates good signal preservation. That means there's no damage that's somehow impeding the electrical signal from traveling from one layer to the other retina to the other. This is a good snapshot measurement, but it's also another measure that you can look at over time. So look at it now, six months from now, a year from now, are things getting worse? Yes, this patient could be getting worse from a glaucoma standpoint. So those are the three tests, report interpretation for diabetic retinopathy assessment, Flickr 16 trolling and PHNR. As always, if you have any questions, please reach out to your LKC representative or your authorized LKC distributor. Thank you.